everybody, it's Joey from Junior Mojo, and today we're gonna play the Mail Must Fly Challenge. Tell us how it works, Ralph. So all the kids that come here at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum will get a passport. Cool, so we're gonna go around, learn all about space and aircrafts, and get stamps for my passport. The purpose of the Mail Must Fly is actually to learn about the different uh, planes that were used in Canada during history to deliver the mail. So I'm going to be the mail boy for today. That's right, Joey. Cool. So what's this one behind us here? So this plane is actually called the Curtis HS2L. It's a plane that was used in the 1920s to deliver the mail. And how many of these planes are there left? This is the only one left. Oh my gosh, and it's the real one. Yes, well, it's made almost three quarters of the original parts. The rest is mostly called replicated parts or copies. Oh, so you guys fixed it up. We had to because it was in bad shape. Oh yeah, that's like this one over here? Yes, this one is actually in bad shape, and but we don't have enough parts to put it back together. Oh, okay, so what does this one do? Like, what did it deliver? So at the nose here is actually the place where the pilot would put mail or even supplies. Cool. So how do I get my stamp? So you get your stamp by actually putting the mail at the mailbox right next to you. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it, Joey. Delivery. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what's this plane, Ralph? This plane is called the Norden Norseman, Joey. Norden Norseman, I like that. That's right, it was built by Robert Norden in 1935. 1935, so it's over 80 years old. It's an old plane used for doing what's called bush flying. And what's bush flying? So it's flying in remote areas or even like uh, north or northwest territories at a time when it was very difficult to travel. Because there was no railroads back then? No. So they'd go all the way north, all the way west? And the only way to get there was by flying. Cool, and what's this tube here do? This tube actually is connected from the outside inside the cabin. It allows to use the heat from the exhaust pipe to warm the cold air and bring hot air inside, inside for the pilot. Oh, so it's totally tubular. That's right, Joey, totally tubular. Oh, this one's big, Ralph. It's called the Lockheed 10, also called Electra. Electra, cool, what's it for? It was used for commercial air flights in the 1930s. Oh, so it's one of the first planes to have passengers. That's right, and inside could carry about 10 passengers. And that's why they had to put the bags in the front of the plane like this? You got it, Joey. Oh, cool, and what's TCA stand for? So TCA stands for Trans Canada Airlines. Most people don't know that this used to be the old name for Air Canada. Cool, Trans Canada Airlines. Oh, wow. Come around the side, I want to show you something, Joey. Oh my gosh, look at all this, we gotta get it. Oh my gosh, we're gonna see everything. Look at this, Joey. This is the original uniform of a 1930 stewardess. Oh, so like the original flight attendants. So these were the women who had to pour the drinks and give everyone food. Not just that, they also had to be nurses. Oh, registered nurses so they could take care of emergencies? Or take care of sick passengers. Oh, cool. Talking about um, women in aviation, did you know that uh, Emina Earhart used a plane similar to this one to try to go around the world in 1937? Cool, and a plane like this? Yes. But didn't she go missing? Unfortunately, yes. Oh. But 30 years after, yeah. Anne Pellegrino, which is an American pilot, did use this plane to try, and she did actually go around the world. In this actual plane? And this actual plane, oh, Joey. Oh, good for her. <laughs> Can you believe how much cool stuff there is here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa, Ralph, this plane is enormous. This is Douglas DC-3. DC-3. That's right, it's one of the biggest pieces we have at the museum. Cool, and what's it for? It was used in the 1930s for passenger flying, but when the World War II came to, they were, some of them were used for military. Oh, so this plane's a war hero. That's right. Let's salute it. Now, I don't know if you know this, but some of those planes are still flying today. Oh, so it's a really good model. So last but not least, Joey, this is the Fairchild. Fairchild, cool, what does it do? So it was a bush plane used to deliver the mail. What year? It was used in the 1920s. Oh, it's really old. And Romeo Vachon, who was the first Canadian pilot, French, he actually used a Fairchild too. Oh, excellent. Now, look at the wings, Joey. Oh yeah, they're all folded in. It makes the plane easier to store. Oh, cool. Now, all the naval planes use the same features. What's a naval plane? It's a plane that can actually be used by the Navy. Oh, on the water. Cool. Little known fact, Joey, Romeo Vachon cut a hole in the floor of his plane. A hole in the plane? That's right. Oh. And from there, he would drop the cargo in the mail. he just drop it out the hole? But the cargo and the mail were hooked onto a parachute. Oh, cool. So here at the museum, kids can also drop their parachutes with the mail. Can I try? Of course, Joey. Let's, Let's do it. Let's go. 
We've had a super cool day at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. Thanks so much for having us, Ralph. Thank you for coming, Joey. Now, the last part of the mail must fly is to do just like Romeo Vachon and to deliver the mail with the parachute. So I gotta drop it over here and try to get it on the target. That's right, Joey. Let's do it, ready? Let's do it. One, two, three. <laughs> Geronimo! Yeah! Yay! Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming. Bye. Bye. The Sloth here with Junior Mojo. Want to subscribe? Click that logo. Or just click here to make the videos go-go. <laughs>